For 25 years, there's been something really special happening in the Caribbean. Starting as a tiny sea swim, the Flower Sea Swim has grown to be one of the biggest and most competitive open water races in the world. I got some pink. From the legends in our sport who make the trip down here every year, to the swimmer whose lifelong goal is to finish a one mile race. If you've spoken the language of swimming, you speak it forever, because we're family. This is a story about swimming, resiliency, and dreams. This is a story about family. I'm Davis Tarwater, 2012 Olympic gold medalist. Swimming has taken me all over the world, but this event, the Flower Sea Swim, alongside the shore of the Cayman Islands, draws me back year after year. The beaches. I mean, you can't look out there and tell me that's not, that's not nice. <laughs> food. What food's good to eat? Any restaurant that serves fish on this island is always going to be catch of the day, like freshly caught within the last 24 hours. You stuck up? Yeah. Wild chickens running around. Iguanas roaming the streets. There's a giant lizard crossing the street. Ah, oh, there you go, an iguana. It's an adventure made for swimmers. Made for all swimmers. I think you know who you are. It was awesome, it was fun. It's a beautiful place and it's for a great cause. It's like old times. It's always nice to see an event where you can actually mix older swimmers that have been retired for quite some time like myself or young kids that are up and coming and you know, you get in there together, they get an opportunity to race you and it's just a great atmosphere. You know, go as fast as you want, you can go as slow as you want. Uh, just come down here and participate and have fun. It, it feels more like a party than a, a race, but people take it competitively too, so there's something for everybody. For a few years now, I've made a family vacation out of this swim. Come down on a Thursday, enjoy the island, compete in the one mile and the 5K. I'm not quite in the shape I used to be, so I watched the 10K from the shoreline. I've made new lifelong friends and reconnected with old ones. Today I'm meeting up with my buddy Ian Crocker. How's it going, How's it going Davis? man? Good to see you. You guys have probably never heard of this guy. You hungry? I am. All Let's right. Eat. Let's eat. Half a chicken, gravy kind of poured onto the red beans and rice. Here we go. So tell me, man, how long have you been coming down here? I think this is my eighth year. Come down to this beautiful place and get to swim in the perfect clear ocean. You get to meet other swimmers from around the world, all at the same swim, and they're all enjoying it just the same as you are. But now, us being retired, we don't have to stress about it quite like we used to. This is going to help my mental health, but probably not my physical There are worse choices, though. <laughs> I mean, this, I, I think this, this is a good health meal. <laughs> so how did we get here? What was the vision 25 years ago when it was just a handful of swimmers? How did it grow to more than a thousand people from all over the world? Age group swimmers sharing the water with Olympians. I was, the driving force behind it all is one family with a dream. I was like 40 behind you guys. The Flowers family, determined to see it come to life. Mr. Flowers, tell me about the very first sea swim. I was really shy to go in there. And I went and I came um, second in my age group the first time out and I felt so elated. And part of it is because of I'm the oldest person in my age group, so <laughs> that helps, right? <laughs> everyone in our family, it, it's passion, right? Like whatever kind of everyone does, they try to do it with passion and with, you know, my dad loves this event. He's so passionate, he wants to see it do well. Why swimming? Why have you become so passionate about swimming? As I say, in order for swimming to grow, we have to have, people have to have heroes that they look up to like you guys, and especially the kids. Man, I was in the water with those Olympians. And you know, that drives, I mean, it's passionate about it. And they go home and tell their parents, you really? And then, you know, it, get, it kind of pushes the sport. And I mean, we have such beautiful conditions for it, right? Why not swimming, really, you know? <laughs> it's so perfect. passion the Flowers family has for swimming spills into the rest of the country, inspiring even the highest level of government to support the race. The work that the Flowers family and Frank in particular and his family have, have done over the last quarter of a century has been absolutely amazing. I remember when it started. It's become an internationally known event. These sort of niche areas are what I think help to distinguish the Cayman tourist product from many of the others across the region.
Making the Cayman Islands a household name for swimming, putting kids on national and even Olympic teams, hosting destination open water events, these are dreams of the sport coming true. But they come after a nightmare. It was a bad hurricane, 2004, Hurricane Ivan. It was uh, a little startling to see, you know, 12 hours later, everything was flooded. I didn't have school for three months. I didn't have the access to the pool for almost three months. And, you know, Mother Nature is crazy uh, what, what she can do. It brought people on their knees. People were without food, without water, without power um, for months on end. Did you ever think that maybe this would be a year where we wouldn't have it? No, we, we got it together as a family and they said, no, it must go on. So it wasn't a question of not having it. And we decided there is no way we can host a sea swim and ignore that. And we decided the proceeds would go to helping three needy families live free for a year. Got a bunch of local companies on board, used the registration money and literally paid phone bills, water bills, you know, everything for for a year for these families. And that year was a special. That was seeing the recovery mile. And then there and every year we've tried to, you know, find a, a sort of grassroots local charity to support. Every year, no matter what the charity is, it feels like it's a win. It feels like it's, like, again, a double service because we're letting people enjoy their race as well, you know? And that, that hits close to home this year. Well, this year is very special because we lost my mom, uh, his wife, to leukemia. Um, and part of the reason why she passed away was that we couldn't find a bone marrow match. So for us to be able to bring that like educational component to support that financially, it's, you know, it's, it's a way for us to kind of turn our pain and our tragedy into something triumphant, which is again, you know, something that we as a family have always, have always tried to do. This race, its mission, are ingrained in the spirit of Cayman, its people, its swimmers, and its homegrown heroes. This event, the Flowers event, has probably always been a part of your life, right? I'm so proud of it because the people who are behind it, the Flowers family are monumental in contributing and enhancing the spirit and livelihood of the Cayman Islands. For the people of the island, they get to interact with experience and um, watch world-class swimmers perform uh, in their backyard. It's kind of a win-win, I think, for everyone, and the Flowers family has really nailed uh, the execution of it. And it's helped open the Cayman Islands to swimming families and teams from all over the world. Davis, hey, how are you doing, man? Going, man? <laughs> Haven't see seen ya. you in a long time. I know, I know. When I did you guys uh, get here? Uh, two days ago. Oh, wow. Two days ago. Thanks for calling right yeah, away. <laughs> it's good to be in a swim meet. <laughs> Talk to me about how swimming on the islands developed. You know, Davis, I think it's come a long way. We love having teams and individuals come down on vacation with their kids, and it's a family experience. Everything we do is focused around the family. A focus on healthy families, on safe families, on swimming families. So deep that it's influencing new development to invest in the sport. Looking at this beautiful 50 meter pool, almost seems like a statement of how the islands changed over the last two years. Well, I actually think it is, you're correct. Um, the island has gotten a lot more fitness conscious. We have two lanes here, and in phase two and phase three, we have the size to be able to make this three lanes. So you're gonna build an even bigger 50 meter Olympic yes. size pool in your next development Absolutely. right across the street. When you come back That's next- a commitment to swimming. When you come back next year, you'll be able to do a film and there'll be three lanes. All right, and, and maybe I can swim here even if I don't have the money to buy there you go. beautiful units. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> about this event is just the atmosphere and the athletes and how we all kind of come together. My love coming down here and seeing you know people of all levels so excited about the sport. Probably the coolest thing about the one mile swim is there's 1100 people. It's awesome for the community and it's awesome to bring together so many different age ranges and skill ranges. It is the most beautiful water. You're swimming in the sea and checking out the turtles and the stingrays and all the fish while you're doing this and it's one of the safest races I've ever swam in in my life. The swim they put on is amazing, and it's, yeah, it's get to swim in crystal clear water and white sand beaches, so it's pretty cool. The Flowers family and the Flowers Sea Swim has taught us that families don't give up. Families grow together. Families are resilient. Stroke for stroke, families encourage each other to dream. This is a story about the strength of swimming.
our sport. Score to me. <laughs> this is a story about the strength of family, our family. 